Today on Mad Goblin, we're playing with resins. Ouch! Hey folks, I'm Mike. And I'm Steve. When we were working on our dice tower, we ran into a prickly predicament where we wanted to add a body of water to it, but our resin order wasn't going to make it in on time. So we had to improvise with either the epoxy or the polyester fiberglass resin that we had in the shop. After the success we had using the polyester resin and realizing how much cheaper it was than the stuff we normally use, we decided let's start experimenting to see what other budget alternatives we could find. Now there are some real limitations to the polyester resin and the epoxy, like a yellowish brown color and lots of bubbles. And we certainly can find some more expensive options out there that have none of these faults, but that defeats the entire purpose of finding budget alternatives. We are looking for something that will give us the same results as professional grade products, but without spending a whole lot of money. As a quick disclaimer, none of the products featured in this video are sponsored. So we scoured the web and local stores, and we brought together a bunch of different products priced at $20 or less. And now, we're going to run them through their paces. And find out which one is the best. First up, we're going to be talking about generic resins. Now there's a bunch of different brands out there, but first and foremost we're going to be using Envirotex Lite. Nice thing about this stuff is that it's available online and you can find it at pretty much any local craft store. What's really important to note is when you're mixing this, you want to make sure you have equal values of both. If you don't, you can have some unfavorable results where the resin itself can become sticky or not cured all the way. So that's really important to know when you're mixing this. It could take some trial and error. The actual cure time for the resin itself is 24 hours, but you can start seeing it harden within one to three. What's really nice is that it can be dyed any sort of different kind of color. If you want to add glitter or any sort of other element into it, it tends to blend really well and it, it cures pretty crystal clear, which is really nice, especially for any sort of effects that you're trying to go for. You might want to be careful with air bubbles though. It tends to happen when you're mixing too hard or you're introducing other elements into it. Now, when you're mixing this, it will generate a little bit of fumes, but I would really just crack open a window, something, or just open a door, get some airflow going in, you'll be all right. I really recommend shopping around. We found ours at a really good price from a local craft store. If you find yourself in a situation where you found a really good deal on it, do pick it up. It's really great to work with, pretty simple, and it's great for a multitude of projects. Next up, we have a UV resin. We're using a product from Green Stuff World, there's other brands out there, but this is the one we like the best. This is more of a specialty item. It's not something you're gonna find at your local art store. You're probably gonna have to do a Google search and find it online. This product is ready to use out of the bottle, which is wonderful. You don't have to mix anything. You don't have to worry about getting measurements and ratios right. It's just ready to use. Now you do need a UV light to get it to cure, especially if you want it to cure immediately, which is its biggest strong selling point is it can cure immediately. This lets you do some amazing things like make water drops. You could build up different layers of texture to make waterfalls or slime pouring out of an animal's mouth. It's truly an amazing product. It dries crystal clear. And from our experience, it doesn't blend very well with dyes. The dye can start to separate into dark spots and it's not always desirable. So you do have to be careful how you change its color. Now I have a really important thing I have to go over about this type of resin. When it's curing, it makes a lot of fumes. So you do have to wear a mask and you should have a well ventilated area, but it does smell and it does create that hazard. But the nice thing about it, because it's in this nice fancy applicator bottle, you usually don't need to have gloves if you're careful, which is pretty nice. All in all, this is a great product with a fairly average price point. It's not the cheapest resin you're gonna get. It's also not the most expensive, especially when you take into account there's zero waste. You just use whatever you need. You put the cap back on. There's no need to take into account volume fill area or anything else like that, which is wonderful. I'd only use this though in areas where you need something that is an instant cure when you're doing those specialty water effects or puddles or anything else like that. But if you're trying to fill in large areas, I would never use that for this. It just becomes cost ineffective. This is a generic two-part epoxy. It can come in a variety of brands from Loctite to Gorilla. Uh, today we're using Adhero, Adhero, Adhero. 
It's available in a variety of places. Basically anywhere that sells adhesives, you will find epoxy. Now, what's really nice about it is it has this dual plunger system. So as you're pushing down, you're gonna get equal parts epoxy and hardener. Give it a little mix, you're good to go. Sets in a few minutes, uh, five to 10, but realistically you wanna give yourself a few hours. Epoxy by nature can be pretty viscous, which makes it very difficult to work with. We can mitigate this by using acetone as a thinning agent. You just wanna be sure it's 100% and clear. It blends pretty well with dyes, but keep in mind you are gonna be limited by the base color in which it cures at. It will be different for if you're using acetone or if you're not. It is really safe to work with. Uh, just keep in mind you wanna wear gloves and have some sort of ventilation. There is a bit of a strong peroxide smell to it. The short cure time allows you to manipulate it a bit. So it's great if you ever wanna add any sort of texture work to whatever you're working on. If you're really in a pinch or an emergency, this is a pretty great way to go. Next up, we have a polyester resin. This can be found at any automotive store and it's generally used with fiberglass work. This is also a two-part system, but unlike the other ones, you only need a little bit of the hardener, which is really nice. Unfortunately though, it's extremely unforgiving. If it's not mixed properly, the edges can start to pull up and collapse and it just makes an awful mess and it can even damage what you're working on. So you just really need to pay attention to that. It takes a couple hours to set and about 24 hours to cure. Unlike the other resins, this one here has a natural color to it. It cures to a fairly dark amber. You can lighten it with the use of acetone to thin it, but unfortunately you're never gonna get rid of that base color. It does blend well with dyes though, doesn't separate and it does create a very nice solid color. But again, you're left with that base color so you can't change it too much. Overall, it's a really nice product to work with. It pours well and it even self levels. However, it does generate an incredible amount of heat when it's curing. And for that reason, you need to take time and pour thin layers and gradually build up to the depth that you want. This is my favorite of all the resin products. And it's not because it's the most dangerous, but it's because of this here big boy can. It's just so awesome. And also, it looks like they packaged the ectoplasm from Ghostbusters 2. How can you go wrong with that? As I said, this one is the most dangerous of all of the resins that we're using here today. And for that reason, it's mandatory that you use all of your proper protective equipment, your gloves, mask, goggles, and have proper ventilation. I'd almost say don't even do this inside your house, do all your work outside in your garage. Now, despite me joking about this one being my favorite, it actually has the most limited uses of all the ones that we're experimenting with today. I would really only recommend using this if you're going to be doing murky or swampy waters like we did with our dice tower, or if you're going to paint it, and then it's an excellent use. Next up, we got silicone caulking. We're using the Home Builder brand, but you can use any clear 100% silicone found at your local hardware store. This stuff is ready to use right out of the tube. Now, depending on the brand you use, you might have a different finish than what we got. When we use it, we had a bit of an icy sort of frosted finish to it. Keep in mind that because it is a silicone, it's not gonna be hard either. We're gonna break this down into two sections. First, we're gonna talk about using the silicone raw as it is. What's nice is that it mixes really well with whatever dyes or pigments you're using. Now, keep in mind, it is rather viscous, so it can be pretty difficult to work with. If you are gonna be applying it to anything, you wanna do it in relatively thin layers so it does get a nice consistent cure all the way through. The only real use that I can see this for is if I wanted some sort of special texture or if I wanted to manipulate the surface of water, for example. The next section is thinning. Now, there's a lot of people online talking about using acetone as a thinner. Just don't. It yields such garbage results. It's such an uneven surface. There's so many bubbles because of the amount you have to mix. Save yourself a lot of hassle. Now, if you want to thin the silicone, use mineral spirits. That way it dissolves the silicone properly and it creates a nice smooth and velvety liquid that is easy to work with. It also eliminates a lot of the bubble issues that you get when you use acetone. When you're dyeing silicones, you wanna be sure to add your dye or your pigment before you add in any sort of thinning agent like the mineral spirits. 
Otherwise, it's just gonna cause some sort of separation. It actually won't really mix well at all. It'll just make a mess of whatever you're trying to work on. The smell that it sort of gives as it's curing is as like a peroxide or a vinegar smell. So be sure to crack open a window, get some nice airflow going, just so you're not directly breathing it. If you're ever gonna use silicone, I think the best case scenario would be to use it unthinned in its current raw state, even with a dye, it would be fine. And I would mainly use it for water surface texture. I think it's a great application in that regard, but it has limited uses otherwise. Mod Podge, Dimensional Magic. Not only does it sound like a Scooby-Doo episode, it's the safest and easiest product we've ever used. And it can be found at any craft store or online. This is a water-based non-toxic product that can be easily cleaned up with soap and water. It leaves a very hard epoxy-like finish that cures in 24 hours. It has the wonderful consistency of milk and this really nifty nozzle, which makes it very convenient to use. It pours cloudy, which makes it easy to see, and it also dries crystal clear with virtually no bubbles, and any bubbles that do form are easily removed. This product blends really well with dyes, but unfortunately, it slightly mutes their vibrancy, so you are gonna to wanna to use two to three times more dye than you normally would. The best part about this product is the fact that you don't need to use any protective equipment when you're working with it, so even children can safely use it. Envirotex Lite set with a really solid cure with no warping and little to no bubbles. It has a great shine with a crystal clear opacity, allowing the texture of the riverbed to show through beautifully. Green Stuff World's UV resin cured incredibly fast with a UV light, even at this thickness. As mentioned earlier, you can see the amount of fumes being generated in this process. It cures very clear with minor bubbles, but that could be avoided with more care. Epoxy resin formed lots of micro bubbles during the mixing process, which unfortunately carried over into the final sample. The deeper the pore area, the more apparent the cured yellow tint appears. It's especially noticeable in the center of the riverbed. Polyester resin cured hard and with an amber matte finish. However, during the pour, it managed to break through the thin parts of body fill we used to cover all the pieces and it began to dissolve the foam below. Take caution of your materials and how the chemicals react. Don't risk ruining your work. Silicone caulking set with a soft and glossy finish. Since we used it rather thick, it starts becoming more opaque and adds a white hue to the overall look of the water. It was more difficult to fill in and it created an uneven surface. However, this can be liquefied further with more mineral spirits, but having it thicker allows for more sculpted effects like moving water. Mod Podge Dimensional Magic poured easily and self-leveled. Once it cured 24 hours later, it created an uneven surface from the air drying process and displayed some warping on the edges. This happens with water-based products. This could be corrected with a second pass to achieve the desired effect. That being said, the final cure was incredibly clear and bubble free. We hope this gave you all a better insight into some budget alternative resins. Now we weren't able to cover every option that's out there, so please share with us your favorites in the comment section. Thanks for hanging out with us. See ya.